Okay, so we now return to the AnyLogic conference presentations. So uh, welcome to those of you just joining us. Um, I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Alan Barnard and Jacob Ben Vosloo, who's director of the simulation of simulation at Goldrat Research Labs, and they will be presenting today on supply chain network optimization using simulation and vehicle routing optimization. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I think we are ready to start. Okay. Great. Take it away. Uh, it's a great honor to present this really exciting case study today. Just a, a quick introduction of Golden Research Labs, and then I'll hand over to my co-presenter, Jakobin Fossler, to present a case study. At Golden Research Labs, our vision is to help organizations and individuals make better, faster decisions when it really matters. We are passionate about helping organizations answer two simple but important questions when we do an analysis. The first question is how much better you can do, a little or a lot? And if you can do better, how best to do it? How to do it in the simplest, fastest, lowest cost and lowest risk way possible. Uh, over the past uh, decade or so, we've been privileged to work with some of the leading organizations around the world, many of the Fortune 500 companies. And again, this case study that we will be presenting today is with one such company. And I'll hand over to Jakob Ben Fossler to give a quick overview of the outline of the presentation and share the main content. Thank you for that, Alan. So we're going to start off by having a brief overview of the company and the project background. And then as Ben discussed now, how very important it is to have a good purpose for your model, we're going to talk about the project and model objectives. And then, of course, why did we use simulation and why specifically any logic? I'll do a bit of an overview about how the model was set up in terms of inputs, the different features, functionality, and the outputs. And then we'll do a quick demo where I show you some of the key features and functionalities in action in a little video from how did we calculate distances, optimize the customer to depot allocations, generating routes, as well as simulating the delivery and collection or the execution of these routes. And we'll have a brief look of the summary of the results, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. You guys are welcome to post the questions inside the chat, and we'll respond to them at the end. So a bit of background about the company. Unfortunately, we can't name the company, but they are one of the largest distributors in their industry around the world. And they've had substantial growth in the number of depot locations over the last couple of years. And this, is, has, this has resulted in a complex and costly delivery model. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainty and volatility in future demand, um, as is the case with many supply chains currently. And this will lead to over and underutilized warehouse space of their current depots. Now, the current network de design is becoming unsustainable due to an increase in the real estate costs in the number of the current depot locations as well as the highly competitive driver market, which results in a high driver turnover rate at a number of the geographical locations. So before we got involved with this project, there was two studies that was done previously by two other consultant companies, which was mostly high level network optimization studies. And these concluded that the depot locations could be reduced by 25 to 30%, but that it required a drop and hook method for delivering and a lot bigger trailers, 40 foot trailers. Now, for those that don't know, a drop and hook method is when you do not deliver directly to your final customers. You actually take your truck and trailer, you go and drop off your trailer at a drop and hook lot. Um, you go and collect used trailers or empty trailers and bring them back to your depot. And then usually other contractors or other drivers um, inside in the area would deliver the final mile delivery to the customers. They'll go and pick up the trailers in the drop lot go and deliver it to the customers and, and, you know, and bring back the empty trailer. The total net uh, present value of this project was calculated at about $18 million, right? So the objective of our project was to confirm whether this expected operational and financial impact was actually 
um, you know, true. What, what would it have been if we redid this now in a lot more detail? And we had to validate a lot of the assumptions and the results from these previous optimization projects. We also had as a sort of a secondary objective to investigate and evaluate if there's any alternative supply chain configurations and fleet setups. So the model specific objectives was that we had to build a self-configurable model that can consider all the critical system interdependencies, the constraints, the complexities, and variability. The model must be able to simulate the supply chain configuration based on the customer and depot locations, the fleet size and management rules, and the driving restrictions. And the model also needed to be able to optimize the customer to depot locations, generate the routes using vehicle routing heuristics, and then quantify the likely operational and financial impact of operating the supply chain. So quite a number of, of things that we needed to achieve with this model, a very ambitious uh, project that we took on. So why did we choose simulation and, and why specifically any logic? Well, simulation is the only tool that can really consider all the critical system interdependencies, constraints and complexities and variability. And it can provide us a range of likely outcomes for a single scenario. We were able to do sensitivity analysis and also directly compare a number of scenarios for the different supply chain configurations that were available. And simulation is obviously a great way to provide a low risk, low cost way to test the impact of any changes on both your operational and your financial performance. If you were to test some of these changes in real life in your supply chain, not only would they be incredibly costly, but it will take you a significant time, probably years before you realize whether you've made the right decision. So why any logic? So the great thing about any logic is that it can very easily, you know, through some drag and drop methods, as well as writing um, explicit Java code, replicate real world complexity through the use of agent-based as well as discrete event simulation methods. The ability to create a self-configurable model in any logic really cut our development time. And it ensured the usability and scalability for a wide range of system configurations and supply chain configurations. The best part of this is that we are always able to export a model version, give it to the client, tell them to run it themselves, give us feedback whether it's working as expected, whether the results are what they expected, and they can validate it against their own numbers. So this, uh, so this is the ability to export it as a standalone app. And especially in some of the aspects here where we had to use some resource intensive parts of the model to generate some of the data required to actually simulate the model, we were able to use the AnyLogic Cloud to achieve this. Now, another big thing, one of the benefits of AnyLogic is the fact that it utilizes Java as, as the base programming language. So we were able to utilize a lot of standard Java libraries to integrate with numerous other applica uh, applications. Uh, in the beginning, we used Google's OR tools to do our vehicle routing. And then later, we used another vehicle routing optimization software to generate the routes for us. So let's quickly talk about the model setup. So as with all good and big models, you typically have an external source where you store all the data and that the model is completely data driven from an external source. So in our case, we had an Excel file which contained all the network configuration, all the demand data, financials, the fleet configurations, and a whole bunch of other parameters. All of this was fed into our AnyLogic model. And this model had various steps of analysis, which we had to do in order to get to the final objective, which was to generate the likely operational and financial performance. So we started off with a distance calculator. This is not something that we could have done uh, during the simulation run, because in order to optimize for our routes and even our customer to depot allocations, we had to calculate the distance from every single customer to every single depot. So we had over 100,000 um, customers and dozens of depot locations. So you can just imagine the matrix that you need to, to generate here. So by, but by using the AnyLogic GIS functionalities, as well as multi-threading, we were able to get this done in <laughs> a couple of hours. But luckily, the distance calculator is not something that you would do on a regular basis. And so the end result here was just a plain text file that was later used as an input into the model. Now, the next part of the model, and this is something that was sort of added on a bit later into the, into the model, is the allocation optimizer. So here, the objective was that if we've got our new supply chain configuration and we've got new depot locations and our existing customers 
which customers should we serve from which depot location? Considering the fact that the number of the depots, depending on where we purchase new real estate, would actually have reduced capacities. So we need to optimize not only for the stem miles, which is the final mile from your depot to your customer, but also for the capacities at, at the different depot locations. So we did this through simulated annealing, and I'll show you an example in the video in a moment. So out of this, we got the customer to depot allocations. Now, what once we've got the distance matrix, the customer to depot allocations, um, we would put this into the model, and now we have to generate the routes. So originally, we started off using Google's OR tools, um, and with some significant configuration and setup, we were able to generate the routes. But in order to do it for a problem of this scale, it would have taken us days to generate the routes for just a single location. The way we approached the PTV group, they were able to provide us access to their PTV route optimizer um, service. And that's again, the beauty of having Java, we could integrate with their web server using standard Java libraries. And so we were able to send um, specific information to the server and get back the optimized routes using a world-class routing engine, which considered everything from the driver's hour restrictions, the brake requirements that they had, um, optimizing for miles as well as hours. So out of this, we already got a ton of information in terms of the routes that would be um, typically uh, driven by the vehicles at all the different locations. And the model then summarized these into a number of reports. Now, all of this information is then put into separate text files and imported into the model for the key part of the model, which is actually the scenario analysis. Now we could go and say, for a specific scenario, these are the distances. This is your best customer depot to allocation. This is the routes that you are most likely to generate, even in your own system during the time. And this is the financial and operational performance. So inside the model, you are able to view a number of reports um, from the financial perspective, a number of charts for your operational perspectives, as well as a lot of detailed outputs. And all of this allowed us to do a comprehensive analysis of the different scenarios that they were thinking of, as well as generating new alternative scenarios. Okay. Okay, just a quick demo video. So in this video, I'm just briefly going to show some of the main features and functionality. So the nice thing about this is that we had a very good um, a user interface, which made it very easy for people to use. So as I mentioned before, the model could be run as a standalone app, which was really, really useful. Um, the model was also completely data driven from an Excel file, as you'll see in a moment, um, which made it really easy for users to make changes to scenarios because everybody is comfortable making changes inside the Excel file. And inside the file, we were able to set up um, all the geographical information regarding depots, where they're located, how many drivers do they normally have, what's the pricing for drivers. We were able to set up um, the geographical information, the customer order data, when would they expect deliveries, how many products that they order, all the details regarding your fleets, what's their capacity, speeds, and a lot other financial and operational parameters. So once we've done this, we were able now to allocate our customers to depots. As you can see on the video, you had the ability to set up a number of different experiments for your simulated annealing algorithm. And the performance of the algorithms, which was run through multi-threading, we were able to see currently what is the optimized stem miles for each scenario. You can see how the model is starting off. You know, um, and as per simulated annealing, it's allowing worse results and then improving the results significantly. We can see whether or not your results has um, addressed the capacity concerns, etc. So, and out of this, there was also a number of results that they could download and analyze. So, the next step here was then to do the root generation. So, as I mentioned, the entire root generation was done through the PTV root optimizer where we use standard Java functionality to send and receive requests through a web server. Um, and this allowed us to completely customize this root generation part that we wanted as defined inside the model setup. And also using multi-threading, we were able to generate a number of locations concurrently. 
So once this was all done, we have a quick look at the root um, execution. So visually on the map, you could view the model execution. We can see the little trucks moving around between drop lots and, and different depots. We could also see the location or the group locations of all the customers. And if you click on any depot location, you can visually see what customers have been allocated to that specific depot. We're also able to view in detail a specific location. You can see the trucks moving around, the numbers inside the truck indicating the number of orders that they've currently got on. Um, so for this specific supply chain, the trucks would also have to go and drop off trailers at the drop lot. And we've built this little line hall. A line hall is the delivery of a trailer to a drop lot so that the planners could actually visually see whether we were doing this correctly. And remember, drop lots was not something that they already have in the supply chain. So that was a way of validating the model functionality. Um, here's just an example of the videos that's present, of the, the screens that's present inside the model. So we can see all the financials. You can see your vehicle statistics here. What's your vehicle utilization? There's drop lots so that you can uh, drop downs so that you can easily filter between the different parameters, locations that you want to view. And all of these charts are obviously available inside our detailed reports. As you can see, here's just a small number of the CSVs that's actually available from the plant. Um, and then all of this could easily be analyzed in other tools like Tableau um, or even just inside standard Excel. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> so we have a quick look at the results. The model proved that the number of depots could in fact be reduced, but the model also highlighted a flawed assumption in the previous study. The drop and hook method was not as cost effective as initially thought. Um, the number of line holes, which is the delivery to the droplets was significantly higher. And the reason for this was in the high level studies, um, they used averages, like what's the average loading rate per, per truck or per trailer and per line -all. And if you use the averages, it seemed like it would have been a, 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 a cost-effective decision. So the previous NPV was then reduced from 18 million, a positive $18 million, to a negative $5 million. And so that was why we had the second object, objective to say, can we evaluate and um, assess different options and new alternatives for their supply chain. So through the use of the depot to customer allocation, various other network opt options that they considered, we were able to identify a new network structure with a net present value of plus 47 million. So this was a significant impact on our, from our project. So the beauty about having this simulation model and the detail in which we developed it is that we are now able to provide a lot more details for the various options that they are considering from what class of drivers do they require you know there's different drivers for big trucks versus small trucks what is your requirement per month because there's a lot of seasonality in their product how much do you require per location what's the number of vehicles in terms of trucks and trailers and um, we can even give a requirement per day right so sort of like a estimated requirement based on the simulation and then we can also provide a lot of details in terms of what's the number of overnight routes that drivers will take, what's the, what's the hours, what's the overtime. And you can change parameters inside the model to change whether or not you're gonna hire more drivers or whether you're rather gonna do overtime. So the model is actually currently being used on a regular basis to check their assumptions um, and guide the strategic decision-making while they're making the network um, optimization. Because as you can imagine, moving or decreasing your depots by 30% is a massive undertaking. And every time they have to make a change, you now need to decide, what do I do with the personnel? What do I do with the vehicles um, or the inventory that I've got at my current location? And so it is actually the model is, is going to be used for the next foreseeable future in optimizing it, um, uh, the, the structure as we change. And obviously, always the, the demand and the environment change, as we've seen in the last two or three years. So this is definitely something that they will keep on using into the future. OK, I think we went a little bit faster than anticipated. So we have uh, a lot more time now for questions. 
Thank you, Jacko Ben. That was great. Yeah, there's a bunch of questions coming through. I'm just going to uh, perhaps be best if I read them out. So um, I've got one here from Barnabas Lim. What kind of VRM did you use? Single depot? Uh, so this is single depot because we first assigned the customers to the depot locations using the simulated annealing algorithm. And then we used a single depot uh, vehicle optimization engine. Cool. And yeah. the, the second question there is, uh, does it make sense to use an external routing engine like Graph Hopper? So when we investigated a lot of these options, um, Graph Hopper was actually one of them they were incredibly um, slow for the number of routings that we needed to consider. So in even Google OR tools, it took us days to develop these things. Um, and the beauty of using some things like, like an external uh, you know, um, uh, service like P the PTD Group's route optimizer is that you're able to do these executions on a server outside of your own, right? So on, you don't need to rely on your own performance. So it, it actually, it was definitely worth it in the end because we've got so many scenarios to consider that we can't have multiple laptops running for days. Now we could complete a complete a total scenario in about eight hours. This was the time that it took um, that that uh, engine to complete the entire routing for over hundred thousand customers on dozens of depots for a full year. That's uh, yeah, that's amazing. With uh, the third question here, we've got. The customer to depot allocation seems like an optimization problem that could be, could be tackled by MILP, which would also guarantee the optimal. Why did you go for the meta heuristic instead? Uh, so we investigated a number of options and it was purely a case of what do we think would give us a good answer um, a lot faster. So because the main objective of the model was not to just do the optimization of customers to depot. I agree there could have been you know, mixed integer linear, linear programming options that we could have considered or even you know, some other meta heuristics, not just simulated annealing, but for example, the um, I think genetic algorithm was one that we briefly considered as well. But our main objective was to say, even at a high level, how, where should we place our depots, right? Is there two in California or just one? Is there three in New York State or just one? Sort of at a high level, what, what makes sense and how should we change it? So because that was the main objective, this, the, the customer to depot allocation was something that came you know, closer towards the end of the project. So just, just a bit of background. When we started off, we assumed all locations would add infinite capacity. And then you generate a lot of options. We've, we've, we generated this new network that we think was going to be a lot more profitable than the ones they had. And now the question was, okay, we looked at real estate, but we can't find warehouses that big. We have to go for a smaller warehouse. And now you need to say, okay, uh, how can I optimize the allocation of my customers for this specific location? So simulated annealing is just you know, a lot faster and it was a lot easier to set up for us at that stage. But that, that's a very good point. There's a lot of other options available. Thank you. There's some congratulations on the, the beautiful user interface there. But uh, <laughs> Yuri Pilvalny is asking, is it essentially a simulation or a kind of advanced calculator which solves the, the vehicle routing problem and NO problems and just so, animates the results? Yeah, so that is, that is a good question um, because when we started off and we generated the routes, you just had a very advanced way of calculating what is the cost of the routes that you've generated, right? It's something that you can do with a significant amount of effort. But because we had this additional problem of saying we had to schedule um, the movement of the trucks and trailers to a completely different location and bring them back, we had to simulate how many trailers would you actually require? Because if you drive from your depot to the drop lot, the next morning there's a route scheduled to start, let's say at 4, 4 a.m., are you going to be back with a new trailer before that? If not, you know, during our first round, you would just spawn a new trailer and you say, okay, well, in the end, the number of trailers that you've got in the system, that's how many trailers you require. But if you run this simulation without any variability, then obviously it's just a fancy calculator. So the idea here is to say that we are generating the routes and then we are simulating the execution. Now, if you were to do this on a much smaller time scale, what you would do is you would say that I'm going to generate failures, drivers not being available, truck failures, maintenance, etc. 
And then when these things occur, you actually generate new routes. But because the route is such an expensive activity to do for what I've shown now in most of our examples, we generated all the routes, put it into the model, and just simulated the execution thereof with very little variability or not enough variability to cause us to have to generate um, new routes. Wow, okay. So, um, and finally, Andre Malikonov asks, uh, could the conclusion about inefficiency of drop and hook method be a result of poor quality of optimization by PTV? Uh, no, I don't think so. So the, the thing with the root optimization is that you can't have multiple depot optimization with depots linked to each other, at least not in, in the way that we could utilize it inside PTV. So what we did is we treated our drop and hook lots and the depots as just all of them are just depots. And you would simulate the delivery of your um, trucks and trailers to the customers. And then in the simulation, we will connect the servicing of depots to drop lots because the drop lot is just a parking lot. So the optimization part between the drop lot and the depot was something that we configured ourselves where we sat, sat with the planners and said, listen, if you need to deliver these things tomorrow, how will you schedule? How will you organize it to make sure that the things would be back in time to be so that you don't have to purchase that many trailers? So that, that part specifically was not part of them. But one thing that you could have done in order to make your drop and hook lots more efficient is to see whether there can be some integration between the scheduling at your hook, hook, drop and hook lots and at your branch. So if you've got 20 deliveries today at your branch, you don't want 20 deliveries at your drop and hook lot tomorrow because that might require 40 trailers, where if that other one is just two days apart. So, and that level of optimization is, is a significant level higher than just standard vehicle routing optimization. Excellent. All right, I'm going to draw the questions to a, a, a stop there. As a, but there are many more coming in. So I hope you'll take to the platform and uh, engage with the discussions going on there. Uh, and yeah. yes, if you're watching, then uh, please get in touch with Jack or Ben uh, and keep asking those questions. Thank you very much for that. Thanks so much. See you guys in the chat section. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.